What is Gestalt therapy? Well, just like there are many schools of medicine, there are also different modalities of psychotherapy. In this video, I would like to introduce you Gestalt therapy with a demonstration of what Gestalt therapy today can look like. Using case studies are the best way to illustrate psychotherapy methods. So in this video, I'm doing just that, providing you with a case study presented by Dr. Bob Resnick. Bearing in mind the copyrights of the owners, the extracts used in this vlog are kept to its minimum. If after watching this video and you are interested in the works of Dr. Bob Resnick, please follow the link below to purchase his videos. The setting in this video takes place in a Gestalt training group. The therapist begins with a conversation with the client whereby he expresses her impact on him. It's very simple for me to do that, actually. I'm not pleased that you're sad. I am very pleased that you were affected by it. This feeds back to the client that whenever he approaches her, he feels that she's being, he's being pushed away by her. Now, her response was not a positive one, but nevertheless, it is a means for the therapist to make contact with her. Contact, as you can see, does not necessarily lead to a positive reaction. In this case, the client reacts negatively to the therapist's words. The therapist had also made it very clear that he owns his own experience of his interaction with her. And he also showed appreciation of the fact that although his words were unpleasant to her, that he was glad that he was hurt by her. So one might say, well, that seems harsh. What's the point in such a contact? Well, in the real world, hardly anybody would come up to this client and authentically tell her, well, you know what, you have this impact on me. What most people would do is just to ignore somebody to ignore her, to reject her, and then she would be left wondering, what's wrong with my relationships? And she would just go on with life, not being aware of how she impacts other people. I find it difficult to look at you. Yeah. And was concerned about you. Okay. I couldn't really feel the genuine concern or the genuine sadness. I thought it's a kind of uh, trying to please me. From the beginning of the session, the client revealed her discomfort in being the center of attention. When the therapist says, I am, was really concerned about you, it was difficult for the client to assimilate this message or to believe what he has said. With this, we actually get a sense of the client's personality and her mode of defense. It looks like some feeling just came up. I noticed your neck got red, yeah. you held your breath. Your tears got a, a little bit teary, and then you, you squeezed. This is an example of being in a here and now. The therapist noticed a change in the client's face and body language. He describes to her what he observes. Notice that he does not analyze the emotions underlying what he has observed. The term which Gestalt therapists use to describe what the therapist had observed is called the phenomenology. Phenomenology is the observation of what is there at the present moment without preconceived understanding of what it is. So in this case, the phenomenology of the client is that of her change in facial expression. The therapist does not put a meaning behind what she expressed. Rather, he describes to her what he observes, allowing her the space to reveal to him what the facial expression was about. Another Gestalt term that I can introduce here is the word retroflexion. When the therapist noticed that the client was showing some kind of emotion and then squeezed, this act of squeezing is called retroflexion. It is a way for the client to prevent the emotions from being overwhelming. So what's the good in observing the client's phenomenology and describing without analyzing? Give the client space and security to be able to reveal more of her inner dialogue. The client was later able to articulate her difficulty in coming to terms with her own needs and for asking people to help her with her needs. You try to put them aside usually? Yeah. 
uh, demanding something or taking somebody's time and so many problems around this which are much more important. What's difficult to have needs? As Gestalt therapists, we take the stand of the client being the expert. In this example, we hear the therapist asking the client, what is difficult? The therapist demonstrates empathic curiosity towards the client by asking her a rather simple question. What is difficult? He does not assume that he knows what she means when she says difficult. Instead, he chooses to ask her to find out her point of view of what difficult means. Notice also the type of question that he has asked. He had asked what. He didn't ask why. So what's the difference, you may ask? Well, if you start a question beginning with the word what, you're leading the client to describe something. If you start a question with the word why, you're leading the client to intellectualizing an answer. I don't, I don't have the right to speak about my needs. And, um... So that's your belief and you also think that's what others would think. Yes. Their reaction would be, mm -hmm. you have no right to have a need. By carefully asking the client to clarify what she has said, the therapist was able to help the client articulate and make more tangible her inner dialogue. The inner dialogue of the client, which says, I do not have to write, is what we call an introject. An introject is an idea or a belief that we learned in childhood that is no longer useful to us as adults. During the discourse, the therapist was able to identify another phenomenon, which is called projection. In Gestalt terms, projection is attributing to other people meanings and emotion that you cannot deal with yourself. What do you already know about this? The this I'm talking about is your unentitlement to have needs, your belief that you don't think you're entitled and that you don't think the world would think you're entitled to have needs. What do you know about this? Notice that he asked the what question again. What do you know about this? This turned out to be a very important question in the session. It had opened the space for the client to speak about her early childhood experiences. It's brought to the world to fulfill a role and uh, make my parents happy because of what they've been going in the Holocaust and uh, put my needs away. Although we are seeing here less than two minutes of a 30-minute video, we can already have a sense of how far the client has gone through the session. By supporting the client in this way, the therapist has built a secure space for the client to begin psychotherapeutic work. And this is what I understand as building a sound psychotherapeutic alliance. We just drill into this blocked uh, iron, iron square, which is locked, and I saw the key long ago. Mm -hmm. So it's now cracking a little bit. Yeah. So I thank you for that. In your own way. You're welcome. So we have come to the end of the video. And I hope that I have given you a clear impression of what the dialogical Gestalt therapy looks like. And remember that you can find the full video featured here on this link. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave us a message in the comment section below.